Oh, I'm out of focus, dang it. <laughs> All right, well, at least the camera's working. For those who are maybe not here on the middle school STEM teacher's lounge the last couple of weeks, uh, this main camera has not been working, uh, which has been a super bummer. Uh, but I have uh, used my other camera, uh, so now you get this, this premium high quality lens and Canon EOS uh, SL2 uh, coming at you. So, uh, welcome to the Middle School STEM Teachers Lounge, uh, the, the show that's uh, trying to redeem the, 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 the teacher's lounge. Uh, instead of making it a place uh, that has complaining and <laughs> a place where people are upset, um, but it'd be a place where we could actually uh, support one another. We can share ideas, share share tips, share insights uh, of what's working, what's not working um, in the classroom, whether you are in a remote classroom or in a hybrid classroom, in-person classroom, uh, all different contexts uh, here to support uh, middle school STEM teachers. And at the end of every show, I also donate. Um, my, my teacher business makes a little bit of money, not a ton, uh, but I, I take a portion of that money um, every time I get paid in, in whatever, whatever, whatever products or services I'm selling uh, to donate. Uh, and last year I saved up some money and I never knew what to do to donate it um, or who to donate it to. I just knew I wanted to donate to, to middle school STEM, supporting middle school STEM. Um, and so when I started this live stream, I was like, well, I, I would like to donate to maybe some donors choose um, classrooms. And so at the end of the show, I'll, I'll pick a donors choose classroom to donate to. Um, if you have a donors choose classroom and you're a middle school STEM teacher and you're here for the show, uh, feel free to to drop a link to that uh, donors choose re request that you have um, that at the end of the show. Okay, uh, but that'll be kind of near the end. I'm probably gonna short cut this one a little bit short today because I have a I have to be somewhere. I have a Zoom uh, meeting at nine o'clock Zoom class meeting that I typically don't have on Wednesday mornings, um, and so we'll we'll cut it a little bit short today. But today, uh, the big thing that we are going to learn about, uh, if you saw my video on Sunday, is this little device called the Stream Deck. Um, it was traditionally created for, for gamers that they could push buttons and it would do all this stuff on their computer, um, whether it be like open the chat when I'm live streaming or play music or stop the music or uh, switch cameras or do this or do that. Lots of different things you can do. Um, and I'm gonna show you how I can get a lot of different sounds like that just at the push of a button. Uh, that music that I was playing earlier is at the push of a button as well. Uh, so it's pretty cool. It's a lot more than sound effects, but that's one of the main ways that I use it uh, during during remote teaching. Um, I got this idea uh, from Darren Nakakihara because I remember a few years ago, I wanted to start streaming uh, just to kind of figure it out because I just love audio and video. And I'm like, this streaming stuff seems kind of interesting. Uh, so I wanted to start streaming, um, but I didn't really have a reason to get this. Uh, and so <laughs> I was like, well, now that I'm remote teaching, and I saw my friend Darren's video on why it's a good idea for remote teaching, uh, it gave me all the more reason to actually get uh, the stream deck. Um, but I'm gonna go start from scratch with some of the things that I do. Uh, the nice thing is like both cameras are working right now, so you can kind of see me over here and you can see me over here and you can see me over here. All right, let me turn this on, here we go. Uh, this is the, the, the window that you'll get right now. It's on my, uh, my sound effect page. Um, but like, so you can even see when I have it up on the screen, it's, it's exactly what's up on my, on my little, my little thing. So the computer app, uh, actually lets you program what each button's going to be. Um, I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of start with a new profile, just a blank profile. So you can kind of see what the process would be like to, to get it going and get everything set up the way you want it to. Uh, we'll start really simple and then I'll, I'll kind of show some of the more powerful features. I hope that's large enough for you to see on the stream. Um, a few of the more powerful features that this has, uh, including the multi-action feature. And so at the basic level, um, what I like to do uh, with this this welcome screen, this is like the welcome button. Like when you first get it, you're just gonna get this like one little welcome button. And when you click on it, it takes you to the website. We don't really need to do that right now. Uh, so I'm gonna delete that. Uh, but what I like to include on, on each page, you can have multiple pages of stream decks. Um, let me show you like right, right here. Let's see, default profile copy. 
This one's not my mo more elaborate one with nice pictures and images. This is on my Mac right now. When I have it connected to my PC, I've kind of got it a lot more customized. But you can even see on the top right, there's like a school folder. And so these are a bunch of actions that I've got on this page. But then when I hit that top right button, it opens up a lot like more buttons, 15 more buttons that I could program. And I can even put a new, like that you see like, okay, there's a sound effect button, there's a wheel, there's a 20 minute timer button. And then if I wanna go back to the main page, I can do the back button. So even though there's only 15 buttons, you can like create each button to become its own little folder, which is really nice. Um, but let's start with a, a new profile. I'm gonna delete this welcome. Um, and then I am going to open uh, this app, this Stream Deck app that I have open right now. I like to be able to get to it fairly quickly. Um, and so the way that we get to it, I think it's open, here we go. We go to open and we drag it. Uh, and then I can give it a title and say Stream Deck, uh, whatever I wanna call it right there. Um, and then you can choose whether or not you actually wanna show the title or not, depending on if it's like an icon, you might not need the title. And then on app, you just find what app you want it to open. So if I click on choose and I go to applications and then I find the Stream Deck, I click right there, click open, and now you can see it doesn't make sense to have the text right there since I can recognize that item. Um, it's the Stream Deck button. So now if I close this, I have the Stream Deck. You can see right there. I've got the Stream Deck button right there in the middle. And so if I push it, it opens that up. So at the basic level, this opens up apps for you, which is super cool. Um, one of the main ones that would make a lot of sense would be to open up Zoom. And so if you wanted to open up Zoom, you would click on open, you would drag it to whichever button you want it to be. You would find the actual app that you want to open and you would say Zoom, click on open. You probably don't need the title. So I would get rid of the title since it shows that icon right there. Um, and if it's an icon, if it's an app, it's going to automatically show the icon. And so now it's already set up right here when I click on that button. Zoom opens up. So that's kind of nice. It's You might be thinking though, like you spend $150 just to open up an app. No, not just to open up an app uh, because that is, that's the most basic feature. Um, if you saw my video, you saw that I actually get Zoom to open up my actual Zoom room and open up the participant panel, open up the chat panel, open up the, um, uh, turn on my camera, turn on my microphone, do all of that just by pushing the Zoom button, which you don't get if you just program it to open Zoom because I still have to say sign in, join a meeting. And so let's say that I, I want to actually open up my physical Zoom room and turn on all those things. I'm going to delete this. I don't want to just do that, the, the, the thing, the opening up just Zoom. And then I am going to create a multi-action. Multi-action is basically a group of steps. If you know about macros on your PC, it's just like a group of steps that you want it to go through. Um, and the first thing that I want it to do is open up my Zoom room. Now, if I go to, this is my little timer. If I go, I've got my Zoom room bookmarked, which I would have to go and do all of this. Uh, let's say... Copy URL to the clipboard. There we go. Now let's go back to the Stream Deck. Um, and I am going to drag a website. The website is my first thing that I wanted to do. I wanted to open up a website. I'm going to click paste on my URL and I'm going to say Zoom Room, just so I know that that's there. Um, and then just so you can see what happens, that's I'm not utilizing the multifunction yet, but if I just click on that right now, it opens up Zoom. I may have to sign in uh, if, if I haven't signed in yet. Um, so I'm gonna do that just in just so I can, for the, the next few tests, everything is good to go. All right, so now let me close out of Zoom. End meeting for all. Here we go. Some of my students might uh, jump in on my Zoom room if, <laughs> during, this, during this live stream. Um, so after I open up the Zoom room, it takes like a few seconds, you saw. So I, before I do anything else, I create a little bit of a timer. Um, I created a little delay. So I drag delay over there, and then I, I said eight seconds because sometimes my computer is going slow. The delay is by milliseconds. Um, so I don't write eight milliseconds because that'd be really not eight seconds at all. I have to say 8,000 milliseconds right there. Um, and then it's going to delay whatever I tell it to do next by eight seconds. Um, so what I end up doing next, what's in my notes here? I open up Nest. Uh, I opened up uh, the Zoom room. Um, what I like to do is I actually like to turn on the participant panel 
and the chat window. And so let me open it up real quick because I can't remember what those quick keys are. I don't know why it's asking me to sign in each time if I am signed in. When I do it on my PC, it doesn't do that. Um, so the participant panel, if I hold my mouse over it, is, it's not showing me. It's different on my PC. I, if you don't know what the actual key, quick key is, if you go to view settings and then you go to keyboard shortcuts, let's say um, participant panel, participant panel, participant panel. I thought it would show it. It usually does. How about chat? Join meeting. This is the most, you can mute and unmute yourself, but that's not what I want to do right now. This is the most interesting live stream ever. All right. Show and hide the participant panel, command U, and show and hide the chat, shift command H. All right. So first I am going to, let me pull up the uh, a little, there we go, minimize this. I'm going to create a hotkey. Command U. I'm going to just say participant panel. And then on the hotkey, you click right there, and then you say what you want your hotkey to be. You actually type it in. So in this case, command you, Joshua Felix, welcome. Oh, man, I don't have my sound effects set up right now, but I would give you an air horn right now if it was setting up. Good to see you, man. Appreciate you coming in. So participant panel command you is going to start there. And then I like to put half a second delay because uh, I found uh, point, 0 0.5 second delay. I found without this delay, sometimes it missed the... Uh, Let's do 500 milliseconds. It missed the second hotkey. Um, and then my second hotkey is the, the, the chat, which we said was what? Shift command H. Command U for the participant panel, shift command H for the chat. So let me hide that. Shift command H. Drag another hotkey here. Let me call this the chat. Shift command H. All right, so now it's gonna open up my Zoom room. It is going to wait eight seconds. It's gonna turn on the participant panel. It's gonna wait half a second. It's going to, oh, I did two hotkeys there. It's gonna turn on the chat. And then my other one, I do want to turn on my camera. Start and stop video, shift command V. So let's go back to that. Start and stop video, hotkey, video on, shift, Command V, all right. So even if you learn all these hotkeys, like just remembering to do all of them, it's like it's it saves so much time. Um, and then we are going to unmute, mute and unmute my audio. Shift Command A, Shift Command A. So let's add that hotkey. Shift Command A. So Mike, Shift Command A, A for audio. All right. So now I'm going to go back to Zoom and I'm going to command Q all of this, close all of it out, and let's see what happens. Here we go. All right, it's waiting eight seconds. You might have to click sign in. It doesn't make me sign in each time when I'm doing this on my PC. Hopefully the eight seconds was long enough. Participant channel, there we go. Okay, so the mic is still muted, so I am going to, let me command Q that. I am going to add a half a second delay. Um, so I can actually make sure that that goes through. So let's put a, a delay between the video and the mic. So you can see 0 0.5 second delay, or I just say delay. 500 milliseconds, because sometimes I think it's going so through that the, the last quick key didn't register before the next one is going through. Um, so now this should work. Uh, click, click on sign in, Cl sign in quick so your eight seconds don't run out. <laughs> uh, and then you go and you go and you go. Uh, okay, it's uh, the settings that I have on this one, um, they are, I think I have my, my Zoom settings on my, my Mac to automatically unmute myself when I join a meeting, so this one mutes me. On my PC, I actually don't want to join a meeting unmuted. I kind of want to have that decision uh, from the beginning, <laughs> so that's why I do that on my PC. And so if I wanted to add a little Zoom icon, so this is all the actions that the multi-action is doing, so I can click up. So this is all right here. So I may not recognize what that is. Um, so I can add a Zoom icon. It doesn't do it automatically because I'm not opening up the Zoom room. Um, but if I click on this little icon arrow, it says set from file. Um, I have created a little folder of different icons that I downloaded from, let's see, is it under Tom Gibson Media? 
shared, I think shared. I have it. Shared across devices. There we go. Stream Deck icons. And then I should have a Zoom one. There we go. I downloaded a bunch of these off online just so I could have them. Um, and then there you go. And then I can call this my Zoom room. Hit enter. Uh, that's a little small, so I can make that size 11. I can maybe make it yellow so I can see it a little bit easier. Maybe not mustard yellow. So my Zoom room, and now this is available on the top left of my stream deck. And so you can go through and basically just do this. I, ha I created another link for my staff development Zoom link, so that way anytime I have to do PD or we have a staff meeting, I click on that button and it takes me straight there. Um, Sound effects. If you want to add a sound effect, I would I would do, well, let's see. Let's just add one sound effect. I have a folder that I click on, and then it pulls up a whole list of sound effects, but I'll just show you how to do one sound effect real quick. So if you click on Play Audio and drag it over, um, let's call this title Air Horn. Yeah, I don't like that, that weird mustard color that I got. Let's do a regular yellow. Here we go. Yellow. There we go. Let's change this one, too. Yellow, there we go. Okay, so Airhorn. Um, you do have to download these sound effects onto your computer for it to work. Uh, and so there is a website, sound effects buttons or something like that. Let's see, maybe it's my instance. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> crickets sound effect, that's kind of funny. Um, let's say I wanted to find Oh my gosh, it's a long air horn or a long cricket. Let's say I search air horn, DJ air horn. All right, so that is the sound effect that I want. If I want it, I'm gonna click on the actual link there and then I can download it. I'm not gonna download it because I already have that sound effect, but you can search for all the ones that you want um, at that website, which is myinstance.com um, and Let's minimize this. I'm gonna go ahead and find the file, that I, the sound file that I wanna choose. Um, I also share across, I, I keep these on Google Drive. Um, Joshua Felix, is, this, is the download pretty instant? Uh, as far as the actual download for your sound effect, yes. Um, let me show you, I've got the actual sound effects here on my computer. Let me find Airhorn, DJ Airhorn, click open. Um, you can control the volume here. Um, and then you can say, let's say, okay, let me click it. There we go. Um, and then if I want it to play when I push it and then stop when I push it again, like this, I pushed it twice right there. Um, I do play stop. If I want it to overlap, like each time I push it, it's going to do it again. I can do that. If I want it to restart whenever I click on it, I can do that. And I can also loop. Like if I click on it, it just loops. I didn't even realize this. This is a new feature I didn't even pay attention to. It just loops until I click on it again and then it'll stop looping. See, I'm not pushing it and it's just looping until I push it again. So that could be good if you have music that you just want to keep playing. Um, that's pretty helpful. And then if you want it to be a fade in, fade out, uh, you can add those effects. Um, and then I like to find little icons that look like an air horn um, that I can add uh, as the icon, but for now you can just set it as that file. Um, and the last one that I wanna show, this was one that I showed on my actual uh, YouTube video, but I wanna kinda go a little bit deeper, show you exactly how I set it up. Um, I have four class calendars uh, for my, uh, my, my, my lesson plans. And so if I go into my Google Drive and then I go into calendars, actually I have it saved up here, class calendars. And so I can bookmark a, a Google Drive folder and then have all of them there. Um, but that's still, I have to open each one individually. I got my third period, I've got my physical science, and I've got robotics. And so I've got four links right here. Um, I can get one of one button to open all of them. Uh, so the way that I can do that is let me let these open up. Uh, let's have pre-algebra first period open up first. I'm gonna copy that link. And then let me go back to my stream deck. This is gonna be another multi-action feature. Uh, so we've got multi-action. Let's put this one up here. 
Um, this one's going to be called Class Calendars. And I'm going to open up all four with one button. So let's go to website. Let me drag the website. And then let's say Pre-Algebra 1. I don't have to title it, but it just helps me know what's happening first. And then I'm going to paste that link. And then let me go to Pre-Algebra 3rd period. Copy that. Go back to Stream Deck. Drag a website. We're going to do this next. Pre-Algebra 3. Paste. Let's go up back here. Let's do Physical Science. Copy, minimize, got it here, fizz, sci, and then click paste. And then the last website I want to open is going to be my robotics page. Let me copy that. Drag, I already have it up, the website, robotics, and then click the URL, paste it. So this technically should open all four. Let me actually close all of these out. There we go, so we can see it. Um, let me close these out too. And then I am not even gonna have Google Chrome open. Let me go back up here. I'm not even gonna have Google Chrome open and it will still open up all my class calendars like that. And the cool thing is like you can do this if you have like multiple websites, not even just class calendars that you always use for, for remote teaching. Instead of keeping them open all the time, you can just program, and program them into one button. And if you really wanna get fancy, that whole sequence of events of opening up Zoom, I could put that after it opens up the calendar. So I could say, open my four websites and then run Zoom and then turn on the participant panel and then, then turn on the chat and then turn on uh, all the other things that I need to turn on. And so it's a really powerful tool. I just showed you how to do three things just now, uh, but it's been it's been huge for, for distance learning for me. Um, I don't have it exactly programmed right now the way I normally use it on this computer because uh, I'm streaming on the computer that I normally use, and so it's got a little bit more a little bit more added to it there um, on that version. And so um, let's give it up for uh, for for the Stream Deck and, and all that it can do. It's pretty powerful. Uh, and in these last few minutes of this little time that we have together, I do want to spend uh, a little time looking at uh, the last few sessions that I've done. I've actually searched for um, the, the Donors Choose activity that I would want to sponsor and would want to give to. Uh, this time I looked at it beforehand, which I think is probably a better use of time so that way I can kind of sift through and spend a little bit more time doing it. Unless, of course, someone in the chat has a Donors Choose and they're a middle school STEM teacher and would like uh, me to donate. Um, but I picked this one because it is a middle school teacher uh, and she is Mrs. Parks. Interesting thing about the name Mrs. Parks, my very first long-term subbing position was for a teacher named Mrs. Parks. Um, and I actually share a little bit of that in the very first live stream I did of this, uh, talking about my experience there. The second reason I picked Mrs. Parks is because um, she is trying to save up to get an iPad uh, to help her with remote teaching. And I actually just got an iPad a couple of weeks ago. I had like one from 2011 that basically didn't even turn on. Um, but I just got an iPad and it's it's really helped out particularly for writing and you can connect to Zoom pretty quickly with your iPad without an even without a, a cable connection. You can do it wirelessly and then write on the screen. Um, and so it's been awesome. And so Mrs. Parks uh, wanting an iPad, I was like, okay. And she only needs about fifty-four dollars. Um, the I'm, I'm, my goal is to donate about fifty dollars every week um, until I run out of money in my giving money fund. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and give to this classroom. And the cool thing is, I actually programmed what I want to say to her on my Stream Deck already. Um, let me not share my credit card information and let me go ahead and pay donate there. Um, let's see, place my $53 and nine cent donation. All right, here we go. And from Tom Gibson. All right, I'm going to paste my message. Let's make sure it's not too much. Hey there, Ms. Parks. My name's Tom. And I'm a fellow middle school STEM teacher. I have a live YouTube show each Wednesday where I donate to a fellow classroom, and I saw your post on Donors Choose. I recently got an iPad as well and love it for remote teaching. Hope this helps. Post my message. 
And there we go. Uh, so hopefully that'll help out Miss Parks. Miss um, Parks, if you come back, let me know how the iPad's working for you, how you've been using it. I've been learning a few tricks and stuff. Uh, and so is there a way to help you doing this so you can keep making donations for longer? Uh, yeah, I think there might be a donation, uh, a donation link somewhere on the screen, um, a super chat link on the screen if you want to donate. Uh, you can also donate. I'm, I'm, I can give away my PayPal because that's just my username. You can donate at Tom. Um, the PayPal use email of Tom at TomGibson.com. I don't think anyone can hack into your PayPal if they know your email. Hopefully not. <laughs> so uh, I would really appreciate the support, Josh, uh, whatever you donate. Um, any, anything that I make in my business, a portion of that goes to this little this little donation fund to support some of the other teachers. And so uh, it is 8.55. I'm going to cut this one off a little bit early. I really appreciate you sticking around, Josh, uh, see, in, engaging in the chat. Um, and uh, I, have a, I have a meeting in about five minutes. And so I really do hope that you have a good, a good Wednesday, a good rest of the week. Um, I have been feeling the scattered brain uh, nature of a lot of just remote teaching. Monday, I had all these checklists and was just like, uh, you know, and then like I want to spend time on this business as well because it's really, it, it's very energizing for me to do stuff like this um, and then just trying to keep up and, and then in the midst of just like, you know, the pandemic and uh, I wasn't going to share this, but like. I, me and my wife got some some news that a family friend passed yesterday unexpectedly, and so it's just like, gosh, there's there's just a lot going on. So uh, all that to say, if if you're feeling overwhelmed, you aren't alone. So thanks so much for tuning in, and I will chat with you soon. Let me get my my music playing here. There we go.